The word coming out of the rounds was the game had passed me by. I spent five years out of football. In fact, the matter is I was fortunate to get back into it because Pete Rozelle made it possible for me to do so. There are a great number of people in pro football, including myself, who would like to see Paul back with the game. He did so much for it. In 1968, Paul Brown returned to pro football. It was no longer a black and white game, but a vibrant, technicolor world that he had created. Now there's an opportunity to come back and not only own a team, but run it, coach it, have total control of the franchise. Really to have the opportunity to build a, another team from scratch is sort of a rare opportunity. There were cornerstones of his franchise that he was going to stick with. I want an accurate throwing quarterback like Otto Graham. He got that in Greg Cook. We took him because he's a tall, strong-armed, accurate passer. And in professional football, everything starts with a passer. We've got this great, charismatic young quarterback who had an arm that was unbelievable. Greg Cook. One of the few rookie quarterbacks that I've ever seen that can go to a second or a third receiver, and yet it is not mechanical. He became a great thrower. I've seen him complete passes with two men hanging on him. As a rookie, he led the NFL in passing. Gray Cook could very well have been remembered as the greatest quarterback of all time. Then he had a rotator cuff injury, and then he really couldn't make a comeback. And he was carrying us. He would have been our quarterback for 10, 12, 15 years if he wouldn't have been hurt. We lost a great all-time Hall of Famer. Paul Brown lost his Otto Graham, but not his innovative spirit. He and assistant Bill Walsh created a new offense around the limitations of quarterback Virgil Carter. When you looked at Greg Cook, King Kong looked like a weak-armed quarterback. My skill was not a drop-back passer. Whatever you do, don't put it up and right. get us into trouble. With his arm, we devised a short passing game based on timing and receiver selection. All the things we talk about in terms of the West Coast offense, that's what Coach Brown ran at Cincinnati. The quarterback drop, the timing passes, the catch and run plays. That was Paul Brown's Ohio River offense. Brown turned the Bengals into a contender, and Cincinnati won a division title in its third season faster than any expansion team ever had before. Over his last four seasons, the Miracle Man won almost 65% of his games. I was coach of the year down here with the Cincinnati Bengals with the same record that I, I left Cleveland with. But to Paul Brown, only one thing mattered, beating the team that bore his name. The first couple of games, Paul wanted to make a statement to our model that maybe they made a mistake by letting this guy get away. This, he gets away, now he throws, and it is hot. The happiest moment of Paul Brown's career was beating the Browns. I can remember the first time we beat Cleveland, and I got sort of carried away there. The only time I ever saw Paul cry was when we beat Cleveland, and we gave him the game ball. And he couldn't have stopped. 